Aloha my friends, Christina here and I'm so happy to be back in a new video with you today because I'm going to be sharing with you my best tips to keep you from binging. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Christina and I have been a fully raw vegan for 18 years now. I'm just about to celebrate my 18 year raw vegan anniversary. I have reversed my type 2 diabetes living this healthy, delicious, and abundant lifestyle, and I've dedicated my life to sharing this information so that others can achieve more wellness and healing in their lives as well. It's interesting because when people first go vegan or raw vegan or plant-based or simply start trying to get healthier, they assume that the journey is all about the food or the recipes. But the truth is, it's about so much more. Your healing or wellness journey encompasses the emotional, the mental, and the spiritual components as well. When I first went raw vegan and reversed my type 2 diabetes, I thought, this is it, this is as good as it gets. And that physical healing opened the door for my next level of healing, which was my mental and emotional components. I have learned so much in my 18 year journey about self-sabotage, cravings, binges, self-care, self-love, and more. We have all had binges or cravings at one point or another, and they can be challenging to overcome, but it is possible. I truly believe that you are what you eat. Your body is a temple, and it's our job to feed it the foods that it needs so that it can operate at its best for us. I know I've said this phrase so many times, but I truly believe it to be significant. And that phrase is, if you don't take care of your body, where will you live? I'll say that again. If you don't take care of your body, where will you live? Your body is your home. And for many of us in this lifetime, we are learning to come back home to ourselves. My intention with this video is to teach you how to nourish and not punish. In my previous video, we talk about cravings because I believe that cravings are different than binging. Binging is also different from overeating. And in today's video, I'm gonna be giving you my top 10 tips to keep you from binging. Before we get into my top 10 tips, it's first important to understand why you binge. Most people do not know why they binge. They think it's something that they simply do or they have to do. Many people feel that they don't have control over their impulses to want to eat. Most people feel out of control when they are binging. And most people allow those cravings to run their lives rather than staying in a place of empowerment and allowing your choices to determine your food habits or patterns. We live in a society that does not encourage or foster healthy habits. Everywhere you look is a dopamine hit. There are commercials and ads everywhere encouraging people to eat unhealthy foods, fatty foods, foods that are detrimental to your health. And it's not just on TV anymore. It's on ads everywhere you look. It's on social media. People are tempted everywhere they go. And oftentimes, those foods that they're advertising are filled with additives, addictive chemicals, and more that make you not only want to eat more of the food, but make you eat way more of that food than you need. So when you take those foods that have those additives or those addictive chemicals in them, that physical component, and when you couple it with your emotional state whatever emotional or mental state that you're in that feels the need to numb or stuff or self-sabotage in a way, I often find that that is a lethal combination. It's too easy nowadays to use food as a numbing agent and to try to stuff away your emotions. You can also use alcohol or drugs, those are more extreme examples, but food can also be a drug and in the case of binging, there are people who tend to step into a place of avoidance, right? Or maybe perhaps it's a space of fear or not wanting to address certain emotions or problems, situations, people in their lives. And what ends up happening is they end up shoving it down with food. And this is why I refer to food as a numbing agent. Is it possible to eat away your problems? 
I think that there's a short term satisfaction that comes with eating your favorite foods and having that quick fix of something taste really good for a moment and bring you short term pleasure. But then after that, I think most people feel physically worse. They feel physically sick. They ate too much. And I think that it comes with shame and guilt as well, which on top of the emotions you might have already been feeling can only make the matter worse. So how does one overcome binge eating? Where do you start? When you are this afraid of addressing other areas in your life, even listening to me right now might feel overwhelming. So I just wanna let you know you're not alone. I'm here with you. We're gonna start together. So even you showing up today with a desire to change this, an interest to change this, or an awareness is the first step. I've got your back. I'm gonna teach you my tips and my tools and we're gonna do this together. So I recently did a deeper dive on this topic with my Inner Circle members. And for those of you who don't know, I have an Inner Circle membership where I host live Zoom calls twice a week, once every Wednesday and Sunday. And we hop on a Zoom live together and I answer their questions and we talk about these things together. It's essentially a support group. This past week we talked about binging and I presented some journal prompts or questions for them to consider to dive deeper into this topic. So here are the questions that I want you to journal about as well. Do you feel that you are self-sabotaging with food? And if so, when, how, where, and why? When do you find yourself falling into the trap of binge eating with food? What are your biggest triggers in life right now? Or what are your primary stressors? These could potentially be things that you don't normally address, but they're things that I would like for you to answer right now. What do you wish you could change about your life right now? And I invite you to go into detail about that. What are you not addressing in your life that you could be addressing right now? What have you been putting off? Where can you find empowerment in place of avoidance? Where can you nourish instead of punish? And ultimately, what could improve your quality of life at this moment in time? And by this moment in time, I mean this season of your life. I had to wait for the sun to pass for a second there because it was blasting me and it was getting so intense. <laughs> The last and final question I want to address before we jump into these points is where are you self-sabotaging in your life in every area and what steps can you take to address those areas of self-sabotage to improve them or even to step more into alignment with who you are or what you want to achieve, what health goals, what goals in general that you want to achieve on your journey. Self-sabotage keeps us from achieving our goals and it keeps us from being in the place we want to be so that we can live optimally. If the goal is to have ultimate health, at some point you will have to master self-sabotage to get there. So let's do this together. No matter which tips you choose to implement into your life or to practice from this video, there are a few tips that I'd like to give you that you can do every day and at every meal that will keep you grounded and in alignment with healthier eating practices. If there was one thing that you could take away from this video, let it be this. Are you ready? Be present with your food. Before I even get into my tips that I'm gonna be sharing with you, this is first and foremost, the one thing I want you to remember at every single meal be present with your food. Turn off the TV, put your phone down, don't read a book, get rid of all distractions when you are eating and be present with your food. Be present with your body, be present with your emotions and how you are feeling. Turn off all distractions and take a second before you start eating to get grounded in your body. Feel what you feel. Never eat when you are emotional, Eat when you are at peace. And if you ever find yourself sitting down when you're stressed or emotional to eat, take a second to take a few deep breaths, calm your nervous system, say a prayer, 
pull yourself back into balance before you start ingesting food. Because the state in which you consume anything matters. I repeat, the state in which you consume anything matters. Food being one of the most important ones. Always bless your food. Give thanks for your food. Something that I do or something that you have probably seen me do is I like to put my hand over my heart and say thank you and I honor the process of nourishing my body. And sometimes I just say nourish not punish ever and it puts me into a place of self-love, of receiving, of self-care and just it reminds me to be in that alignment. It's as simple as saying thank you. And it's a reminder that I am nourishing myself and I am in a state of calmness and presence when I'm eating. You are not a machine. You are a deeply feeling, breathing, and living human. You're not a victim. Outside elements do not control you and nothing determines what you put into your body other than you. The only person feeding you food is you. So please know that you have the power to choose what you put into your body. Let it come from a place of empowerment and self-love. Woo! Sun is back. So let's jump in to these top tips to keep you from binging. Number one, eat earlier. I typically finish eating my dinners by 7 p.m. I'm starting my dinner by 5 p.m. I give myself a window of time in which to enjoy food, not to hurry through or to rush my dinner process, but I make sure that I'm done eating early. I found that most people tend to binge eat at night and the later you go into the evening, the more people tend to binge eat. Now, I have this thing that I call the munchie monster right and the munchie monster likes to come out at night when you're watching a show or watching a movie when you're distracted by something and it's very hard to stop the munchie monster at night would you agree cutting off your eating hour early prevents the munchie monster from coming out later in the evening and might prevent late night binging finishing your dinner earlier might also mean that you might get to bed earlier which might mean more rest and restoration for your body and for those of you trying to lose weight getting more sleep can actually help you lose more weight in the long term and there are studies that show that what most people don't realize about late night munching is that the later you go into the evening the more your body gets tired and wants to rest and that's usually when people want to munch more because they're craving energy, right? What they think they need is energy because they feel the need to eat something, but what your body actually needs is rest or sleep. So when you think about it, your body is actually craving for you to go horizontal and to go into a sleep state so it can replenish its energy. But most people confuse that with, oh, I need more energy, I'm gonna go grab more snacks at night. And a few snacks at night can often turn into a whole bag of snacks at night, a whole tub of ice cream. And it's impossible to satisfy that munchy monster in the middle of the night because you're already tired and your body will continue to be tired and it's harder to turn off that switch. It's easier to binge at night because people often mistake tiredness for hunger. Eating earlier will help to prevent more late night binging and hopefully it will help you to get in bed earlier so you can get more much needed rest. Number two, eat more fruit and veggie meals. Go raw vegan, eat more meals that are filled with whole, ripe, organic, delicious fruits and vegetables. Oftentimes people deny their bodies of the things that they really want and the more that you deny yourself of certain things that you want, the more likely you are going to binge on them later. But when it comes to fruits and vegetables, it's a little different. People are afraid to eat raw vegan. They're afraid to eat fruit because they think it has too much sugar. They're afraid to eat these big salads they see me eating because they're afraid of eating too much. But what ends up happening is instead of going and eating the healthy fruits and vegetables, they go and they binge on pizzas or pastas or other unhealthy foods. 
What's interesting about this is that most raw fruits and vegetables, especially fruits, are known to be craving busters. Every time I eat a big plate of fruit or I eat a smoothie bowl, I feel so satisfied after eating these meals because I am filling up my carbohydrate fuel tank. I am allowing myself to indulge in these healthy foods, which leaves me completely satisfied. And I believe that the more someone deprives themselves of something, is the more that you end up wanting it. This raw vegan lifestyle provides us with something that most other lifestyles don't provide for us, and that is health freedom. You can eat an abundance of fruits and vegetables and find health freedom with no guilt, no shame. You can feel better, look better, have more confidence, have more glowing skin, sleep better. It almost seems too good to be true, but it's real. Satisfy your need for carbohydrates by eating more fruit. Use that as a craving buster food. I would much rather you binge eat on fruits or vegetables than binge eat on anything else. And usually what happens when you start eating more fruits and vegetables in abundance is you start developing more self-love and self-care because those foods actually love you back. And we get deeper into that topic in my inner circle if you're interested in learning more about what that looks like to eat foods that love you back, join my inner circle. Going raw vegan can be as simple and as satisfying as eating a plate of fruit, drinking a fresh juice, making a smoothie bowl, making a salad recipe. I have so many recipes here on my YouTube channel for you to enjoy. Get a juicer, get a Vitamix, start your raw food journey, start building your raw food kitchen, start having fun with these foods. Imagine that eating delicious foods can be fun and healthy with no guilt or shame, and it can be a source of joy and freedom for you. That is what it means to have nourishment around food and not punishment around food. If you're looking for raw vegan recipes, I have linked my Fully Raw Recipe app below for you. I have more than 450 raw vegan recipes on my app for you to enjoy. My app is available on iTunes and Google Play. I've also linked below for you my favorite juicer, my favorite blender, my favorite kitchen tools, and more. Please go check it out and start having fun in your kitchen. Number three, clean out your house of the things that you do not want to eat. Go find replacement items of things that you would like to eat instead. Fill up your home with fresh fruits and vegetables. If it's in your house, you're going to eat it. Get rid of all of the processed foods, junk foods, or unhealthy foods in your house. What's funny about this is I have mentioned this point in so many videos, and no matter how many times I mention it, I find that people always tend to keep that one little stash of guilty pleasure food in their home, right? That drawer of chocolate or that little shelf of hidden ice cream, that hidden Tupperware of pasta. People tend to always keep that one little guilty pleasure drawer and I'm asking you to get rid of it. Let it be gone. Get rid of anything in your house that you don't want to eat. It's time to say goodbye. If it's in your house, you're most likely going to be thinking about it at some point and you're gonna go find it and you're going to go eat it. When you have an abundance of fruits and vegetables in your home, you are more likely going to want to eat what is in front of you and available to you than anything else. Number four, say no to social plans or eat before. Now I know that this sounds like a very hard boundary, but just hear me out. Oftentimes people get into these healthy streaks where they go long periods of time eating really well. And then they get invited to go out and eat dinner with friends. They go to eat dinner with friends and they think, oh, this is my one night off. I'm just gonna order this one thing. What ends up happening? They get that plate of food or whatever it is and they end up binge eating at that social gathering. And it's never just that one plate. It's the appetizer plate, it's the bread plate, it's dessert. It all just piles on. And then they end up feeling terrible afterwards. So the lesson here could possibly be, don't go to the social gathering, eat a salad before you go, eat before you go so you're not hungry to hang out with your friends there. Let them eat, you can simply enjoy their company and hang out with them. 
or suggest another activity for you all to do that does not center around food. Invite them to go for a walk, go to a play, go to a yoga class. There's so many other activities you can share together other than going out to a restaurant. And if you really feel inspired to share this lifestyle with them, invite them over to your house to share a meal with them. Make them a giant salad, bring them into the beauty of this lifestyle and have fun sharing these delicious and healthy meals with them. That's my favorite. I often find that people are so excited to come over to my house and have me make raw food for them. It's such a game changer. When they see how abundant and how delicious this lifestyle can be, they're immediately hooked and trust me when I say it changes lives. Sometimes all people need is a little inspiration and a little support to help get them there. And from there, you build allies, you build community, and you have some friends to share this beautiful lifestyle with. My number four leads into my number five, which is to find a non-food related activity to satisfy your need or craving. In other words, instead of immediately running to food every time you have a craving, which will lead to binging, what if you went to exercise instead? What if you decided to take a bath or spend time with your animals or go for a walk, go to a yoga class, read a book, listen to a podcast, watch one of my YouTube videos, turn on music, dance around the house. There are so many other things you can do other than to go and eat food when you need fulfillment. Find other things to bring you fulfillment, satisfaction, or joy in life. Oftentimes I find that when people do want to binge, it's because they feel empty inside or fear, or they want to avoid reality in some way. Use this as an opportunity to expand more into a life you want to live, to create more happiness for yourself, to build healthier habits. This leads into my number six, which is really focus on creating new healthy habits in your life. Now, oftentimes when people start something new, approach a new health path or journey, they think that these things are magically going to fall into place. You cannot achieve different results and do what you were doing before. Actually set the intention to build new healthy habits. Nobody likes hearing this, but you're not going to have change or experience results unless you try something new. Change is scary for many people because they're afraid of the unknown or what might happen if they step into this new space. When you're not seeing results, call yourself out on it. Acknowledge the areas that you need to work on and go work on them. Set a plan for yourself, write it down the night before. Yes, those extra steps matter. Trust me when I say you're not going to see improvement or results unless you do something you haven't done before. It's good to put that extra effort in. It means that extra effort will help you get somewhere. Oftentimes we see other people and we assume that, oh, it just came easier for them. The grass is much greener on the other side. You see someone on social media and you think that they were born that way or that it was easy for them. I am telling you from 18 years of experience, that's not the case. Those people that you see who have what you want worked really hard to get it. If you want that, you also have to put in effort to get there and believe in yourself. You absolutely can get there step by step. It won't happen overnight, but it will happen in increments over time with you implementing these healthy habits with consistency and with believing in yourself. Say no to the things that do not serve you try new things and really focus on creating healthy habits in your life. Number seven is exercise. Exercise is wonderful because it can take away your appetite and it serves as a wonderful way to shift your energy or focus from craving food into movement, self-empowerment, fun, joy, breath work. Exercise is a very positive way to pull you into a healthier mindset. Also, it can make you feel so good to get outside, spend time in nature, move around, breathe, and more. My number eight is brush your teeth. Now, this is one of my old tricks in the book. So after you finish eating your early dinner, immediately go and brush your teeth. 
And usually what that does is it changes your palate and it gets rid of a lot of sensations or cravings in your mouth because most people don't wanna go and eat something after brushing their teeth. My number nine is imagine your outcome. Now this is actually a very powerful visualization or manifestation tool that I've been using since the beginning of my journey. And I use it when teaching people how to get rid of their cravings as well, is because when you really want a food and you're thinking about a food, all you can think about is getting that food right now and the taste and what it will provide for you in that moment, that joy, that pleasure, that 10 seconds of pleasure it's going to give you. All you're thinking about in that moment is that short term sweet satisfaction. And when we pull ourselves into the space of imagining the outcome, what we're really doing is saying, hey, what will you feel like after eating that? When I usually ask people that question, their first answer is, I already know I'm not gonna feel really good. And why do they know that? Is because they've done it before and before and before. They've done it many times before. You already know how you're going to feel. You're gonna feel good for a second and then you're gonna feel terrible for the rest of the night and probably throughout the rest of the next day. It takes people a long time to get tired of their own behavior before they realize that they have to change. And you really don't want it to get to that point. So if you really want to stop binging and if you want to start feeling good after you eat, then a tool you can use would be to imagine the outcome after you finish eating. Really pull yourself into how you're going to feel when you finish eating that food. For me, that was always something I could use as a powerful tool because I would imagine how sick I would feel after eating and how I wouldn't feel good and how miserable I would feel. I would imagine the guilt, I'd imagine the shame. And once I really pulled myself into that space, I did not want to binge eat anymore. I would go and do something else and I used that as a way to move into another space. Oh, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. No, 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 no. My number 10 is an invitation to join my inner circle. For those of you who really want to change your lives, who want to find other people who are on this journey, who want to find community, who want my support, and who really want to master this so that they can step into their ultimate health freedom, this is for you. I've been running my inner circle for years now, and not only do you get to talk to me personally twice a week and ask me questions and get support, but you also get access to previous years of replay, other challenges, and much more. My inner circle community is a very intimate space. It's a space that I keep private for those who want a safe haven to come and learn and heal and more. And if this is something that you feel called to be a part of, I would absolutely love to have you. I've included the link below for anyone who wants to check it out or get more information. There really are not that many raw food groups or support groups or communities out there right now. And I'm so partial to my group because we just have the most wonderful community. Imagine getting to hop on a Zoom with some of your favorite people every Wednesday and Sunday and talk about food and healing and find comfort and learn new tools every single week to help you on your health journey. Recipes are just one part of it. There's so much more to dive into to experience true health freedom. If this is something that is calling your name or if you would like to just try the group out for a month, please check out the link in the description below. I've included it right there for you with all the information you need and I hope to see you there. If you have liked this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button because there is only more goodness to come. If you're interested in joining my inner circle or interested in any of the other resources I've mentioned in this video, my recipe app, getting a new juicer, a new blender, or anything else, I've included all of those links for you in the description below. Please check them out. I think you can tell by now that I'm extremely passionate about this topic and about health and wellness in food in general. So I really hope you have enjoyed this video. I look forward to seeing you all in my next video, sending you all my hugs and my love, and I'll see you soon.